Uh, Bjorn, if you could introduce yourself before start, that would be really nice uh, with a couple of words. Okay, I will start then. And if everyone is um, in the room, my name is uh, Bjorn Jurgens. I'm uh, responsible for the session today. Um, I am German by origin, but I'm living for nearly 20 years now in, in Spain. I'm working in the Patent Information Center in a, in a regional development agency in south of Spain, Andalusia, if you, if you know the, the region. Um, yeah, today I will tell you about uh, patent searches um, because I think it's quite an important step. Uh, as I understand, uh, all of you on your project, uh, you will be dealing with uh, entrepreneurial ideas and want to uh, do a case study for, for, for your entrepreneurship project. And uh, in this uh, phase, it's very important to first to see if your idea that you have is, is something new and you have to know how to find out if it's, if it's really new. Um, so that's uh, basically my session today. I will show you, do you want to say anything else Sada, about the session the program or should I just start with the- Well, you can just start, you can just start and uh, some of, if, you quit, if the participants have any questions, they can, you know, directly ask you during your presentation. Mm -hmm. I know that you won't stay that much until four question and answer after four. So that will be, Good if uh, the participants can ask questions while you were here. Mm -hmm. So you can start. Thank you. Thanks mm -hmm. again for being with us today. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll share my screen. So, do you see full screen now the presentation? Yes. Okay, perfect. Yes. So as I said before about the seminar, um, as I understand you're all working on new disruptive ideas for, uh, for innovation uh, technology-based uh, internship project. And uh, as it was also mentioned in the program, uh, your, your participants, you want to learn to find out the ideas new and new, unique. And therefore the aim of my session of today is that you will, um, learn, first of all, what is a patent and learn how to conduct a patent search um, in order to, to know if your idea is new. And by that, I would like to show you uh, a free search tool that is available to everyone, uh, namely a SpaceNet from uh, EPO. EPO is the European Patent Office. So uh, the structure of my seminar of today First of all, I would like to give you a short introduction about patents in, in general. Um, as I understand in your previous sessions, which unfortunately I couldn't attend because of the same reason why I have to do this today on one hour earlier, because it's just I could just can't attend to this time frame. So I don't know if you were already talking about uh, patents in general. Um, nevertheless, I will do a short introduction. What is what is a patent before going to um, to the patent search and patent information um, theme. Then um, I will do a, um, show you about uh, how to do an effective patent search. And then I would like to um, be with you in a case, kind of a case study, a walkthrough better, better like this, uh, about uh, using SPASnet as a free patent search database. What can, can give you an example of how to use a freely available um, patent uh, source for your day-to-day -day work and how you can then <clears throat> for your exercises, which I understand you have to do some exercises for your uh, project, how you can use this database in your work. Um, and last but not least, I will also mention some other free databases that are available. So to begin my, my session, um, basically here we have some, some famous big high-tech companies Mention here Google, Siemens, also big multinational companies, Philips, Airbus. Um, if you ever wondered what they are up to lately, especially companies which are highly uh, um, active in, uh, in innovating and protecting these innovations, you definitely um, want to see 
about what they are patenting. So therefore, most searching through this, um, the patent databases um, is quite an effective way. First of all, not if, if my invention is new, if others have invented something similar, and also to gain insights into strategic direction of, of some other companies which I might have been interested in. So basically, this is like the two key messages I would like to show to, to give you today is for what patent searching is, is useful. First of all, is uh, the novelty of if my, my idea is new, but also to have a, what we call here a technology watch to, to get from patent information to know what the companies, what the direction might be, what the strategic uh, direction might be of these companies by analyzing their, their patenting output. So what are patents? Um, Patents, uh, probably, um, if you uh, heard of them, here I bring you some, bring you some, some uh, definition here. Basically, it's a, it's a, it's a, in most countries, it's a, the, the definition is, is um, valid. It's a legal document, basically, um, which gives you the right to prevent others mm, from making, using, or selling, commercializing in general, uh, an invention which has been patented without your, your um, permission. So it's uh, granted by a state. So it's always a um, territorial title. So a patent is always valid only for, for the territory, which was uh, the patent filed in. And it gives the applicant, in this case, the, the company, um, always a limited time period of monopoly. Mm -hmm. The patent is not for, for uh, forever. Uh, in most countries, patents are um, valid uh, up to 20 years. Um, basically, uh, what I put here in a nutshell, by basically, it's kind of, um, if it's, it's a treaty between the state, the jurisdiction, and inventor. Um, the state grants you a commercial monopoly, um, but in, in exchange, the, the inventor has to disclose his invention. Many people think by patenting something, it will, it will be staying really secret, but the opposite is the case. By patenting something, the state gives me a protection, but on the other hand, I have to reveal my, my uh, invention. And this uh, this is where it comes so, uh, so interesting to use, so, so handy, the, the patent databases, because um, these patents, they are all, are all published in patent databases. And usually every country, every patent office of every country has a own patent database, but then luckily we have some we say multinational patent databases, like the one we will explain out to you later, which um, basically they have patents from nearly all the patent offices worldwide. So this is really, really, really useful source for, um, for patent searching. So what's the main uh, requisite for, for a patent to be granted? Basically, we can count three of them. Uh, first of all, the novelty. So the patent, uh, the invention has to be new. This is very, that's why it's so important, this session for, for, for you today, because you have to be sure before, you, before going on, before going forward with a, with a commercial idea, you have to be sure if, um, if your, uh, your idea is new, if not, might be other patents already protecting the same, which might be problematic for you in the, in the future. If you want to patent something, that's uh, why it's, a, it's also it's a requisite, it must be new. So no, nothing else can be there uh, publicly available. Uh, it means it has to be disclosed somewhere. It doesn't have to be another patent. It's, it can also be some publication or even an internet page to describe something which might be similar to the thing what you, were, what you want to patent. This, this could also destroy the, the, the novelty of your idea, okay? Then it has, over, uh, non it has to be non-obvious. So it's not just, it's, it has to be something which uh, it's called, has to have some inventive step. So there has to be some innovation in the, in the idea, not something too obvious. And then last but not least, the third um, requisite is industrial applicability. So that's um, usually this is the most easiest one to, to, um, to comply because usually if you want to patent something, you always have the idea behind that you want to commercialize it, and commercialize it somehow. So usually it's always industrial applicable. 
Um, be, be aware that not everything can be patented. Uh, it's just depends also on the, on the country and the jurisdictions. Um, for example, I mentioned here software patents. Um, I don't know the case exactly in the Turkish jurisdiction, but in, in most uh, countries in Europe, software patents, um, they are not allowed. So you can't patent for, uh, for a mobile app, mobile app, for example. Yeah? Um, this is uh, contrary to the US. The US, one of the few countries where the software patents are allowed. Therefore, you have lots of patents from Google and Apple and IBM and Microsoft and so on. But here in, in, in most European countries, it's something which is, um, which is not allowed. And I said before, 20, 20 years protection is, is, is uh, maximum. Uh, I say maximum because of the patent system, usually you have to pay once the patent is granted, you have to pay annually fees for every year you want to maintain your uh, commercial monopoly, let's say. So now some patent information basics. Um, patent information, what is good about patent information is that is, uh, as the condition for a patent is the novelty, we can assure that the information will, that you will find in, in the patent databases is always uh, something new. So if you look at the if you look at the filing dates of patents, uh, you can also always assume if the patent uh, then was granted that the, the information first appeared in the patent and then later on appeared in some other sources, like it might be, for example, scientific publications. Here you find this example. For example, this is a patent from from um, uh, Philips and on, the, on your right side, on the left side, you have the publication describing the same technology that is described in the, the patent. And here you can see it might be a bit small on your screen, but on the right side, the patent was filed in August and, uh, and then the corresponding scientific publication paper was, was filed one month uh, later. Well, filed in this case was published. Mm -hmm. So it's always important, especially if you work in the university field where it's uh, very important for a researcher to publish a lot in scientific literature. If the innovation that I want to publish in my paper is somehow patentable and I, my idea is somehow to make maybe a spin-off, maybe a, a commercial idea, then always file your patent first and then publish. Uh, it's very important because once I published it somewhere, it doesn't have to be a, a, a journal, it can be a website of my university. Once it's published, it can, as I said before, it can destroy or can hinder the, the, the patent publication um, that I would like to, like, like to do. So it's, it's also it's always have to have in mind this uh, condition if you're thinking of patenting something by your, for yourselves. Then uh, patent information completes, uh, contains com very complete, uh, actual and also often unique information. Um, I also show an example in the, in the next slide that usually patents as a condition that you have to disclose the information of your technology in a most complete manner, that's uh, one requisite of the most of the patent offices, so that an expert in the subject field could theoretically reproduce your your invention. That obliges you as an inventor to describe it in a very detailed way. And usually, in many cases, that is uh, because that is the, the patent has a more detailed content of the technology than a corresponding uh, paper or website. Here, for example, you have a patent uh, and uh, on the left side, a uh, scientific application of the same technology of a plants that uncover landmines, uh, genetic engineering plants in this case, and this was uh, patented. And you see the, the, the article is about three pages, whereas the, the, the corresponding uh, patent on the right side is more than 100 pages. So it's a, quite a good example of C to see the difference in some, some technologies on the patent and some other sources, you can see that patents usually most complete source. Then patents have a unified structure. It also makes it very useful for, for searching them. They, um, 
uh, classified, have abstracts uh, to the classification. We'll come uh, later in this in this session. And they're also available in different languages. Usually, uh, Patton in every, every country is uh, published in their in their in their language, but they have a they have a same structure. So um, doesn't mind if a pattern comes from Turkey or from another country. The structure is always the same. And then you have something which is called family of uh, patterns, which means that uh, as a pattern is a territorial um, title. If I'm a company and I want to protect my invention in more than one country, this will generate several filings of patents in several countries in the country for which I'm interested in. But they all belong to the same invention. And that is called um, patent family. So uh, you have one invention and you might have, let's say, 10 patents and 10 filed in different countries. But it's all the same invention. So this would be the family of, uh, of the, the, the patent family of this of this invention. Here is an example of uh, from on the left side, you have the same invention on the left side filed in Mexico, on the right side filed in Turkey. Okay, you see it's um, in, their, in their country language, in Turkish and in Spanish, but the, the, the structure is the same. Okay, you have always you have an applicant, you have a filing number, you have an um, inventor name, you have a um, title, you have an uh, abstract. Um, so that makes it also very useful for, for, for searching them and knowing them that it's, it's a unified structure of every patent document in the world. So why is uh, searching so important? I said in the beginning of the session, uh, basically, um, for you in this case, it's uh, so important to check the novelty of your, of your business idea. Mm -hmm. uh, but also um, for organizations, it's very important since uh, um, many big companies, they have a big patent portfolio and it's, uh, it's a critical part of their IP holdings and patents alongside of other, type, other IP titles like trademarks or designs and copyrights and the patent search and analysis um, can therefore be really, a really um, potent way to gain competitive intelligence about your competitors. Regarding sources, well, today is all available to the patent database the internet. Um, before the time of the legislation was the, the, there existed um, patent offices with uh, patent dedicated patent libraries. It was a very um, very uh, hard uh, work to to look for patents, but uh, as a, just just to, I will just to show you this example that you know that patent searching, patent novelty searching was done done already hundred years ago. So it was a lot of work by then because the patent lawyers in this case they had to go these to these libraries and they had to check all these different documents that were classified in the technology we were searching. Today it's all available in the databases. I will show you some some prominent uh, free available databases, but just to tell you that uh, are also available uh, commercial databases, uh, once you have to pay for it. Usually the data behind, uh, in most cases is the same, but what the commercial databases, they have, mm, let's say some added value, some, some more analysis features or some usability features makes you easier searching. So I don't know if your organization has licensed some of these uh, commercial databases, um, then it might might, work, might be worth a try to have a look at these databases also, apart from the free database I will show you in a, in a minute. So how to do an effective patent search? Before starting with the case study in a SPASNET search, I would like to, show, like to, to, to tell you a bit about the most important steps which you should consider for every um, patent search and what you'd have to take in mind to do a good search. First of all, using keywords. I don't know if you uh, already did search in some other databases of um, papers or whatever. Uh, you're probably aware that keywords you're searching is most, yeah, it's most typical way. Even, even when you when searching with Google, you're basically using keywords. Um, but in patent databases, as also as also as also can be for papers databases, when you think of uh, keywords, um, 
first of all, think of uh, possible truncations of the keywords. Truncations is usually marked in most databases with little asterisks. Um, what it um, tells the data database that you should retrieve not only the exact keyword, but also the, um, the letters that can come uh, instead of the asterisks. For example, the, you see the, the example here from automobile and asterisks, which would retrieve not only automobile, but also, also the, the plural from automobiles. Okay. But be aware that uh, when, especially when you're using uh, small keywords, if you do truncation, you might also include some uh, keywords which are not in the in the focus of your search. You know? For example, here you will see the example of, of car. Uh, obviously, you retrieve car and cars, but also cartography and uh, carnivorous. You know? So it's this uh, usually has, has nothing to do with. Uh, with uh, one another. So you have to be careful, especially when you're using uh, small keywords. Then uh, also think of possible synonyms, which is also quite straightforward. Um, if we are keeping the example of car, I would include also vehicle, car, automobile. Um, but in this uh, sense, also be careful of, of um, homonym homonyms or acronyms. For example, in the case of car, uh, CAR is an acronym for uh, also a, a specific um, immunotherapy, cancer immunotherapy. And when you also, when, when you, in this case, if you only would use keyword CAR without restricting uh, anything else, you would also uh, retrieve a lot of false positives which are related not to the automobile CAR, but also to these uh, therapies. Um, all in all, even when you have a really good keyword sets, lots of synonyms, homonyms, whatever. Um, it still doesn't guarantee you that you will retrieve uh, a good patent data set because you have to be aware that uh, patents, many cases are written by patent lawyers, which use a very specific terminology, which is also called the patent language. So it's uh, some people uh, consider it as a language of its own because it's a bit, yeah, it can be a bit confusing. For example, this would be a, a, a normal person would call it a toy ball, but a patent attorney in the patent title would call it generic spherical object of floppy filament promotes social capture. So it's, you would never guess to use these keywords to search the thing, this, uh, this, uh, this toy ball, um, for example. Or here. Someone who knows about uh, electronics know that it says this would uh, uh, describe a transistor, but instead of transistor, the, the, the patent lawyers or the, the inventors, they call it semiconductor permutation device control electrode. So it's also an, an example which with keyword search only, it would make it really hard to find these kind of patents, which have these kind of patent languages in their titles or also even in their, in their abstracts. So, key, uh, staying with the keywords, it's also dependent on where, where we were searching the keywords. Uh, the, um, the patent, as I mentioned before, have a unified structure. Um, they have all a title. They have all uh, abstract, uh, which is a sum up of the, of the invention. Then they have a chapter, which is called uh, the claims, which is basically the most important part for inventor to describe what is real novel in his invention. And uh, then you have a um, chapter which is called this description where you, where you usually write a bit of a state of the art, uh, where you write about a bit how the, the, the, the uh, a bit more background of the, of the patents. So basically if we have these four um, uh, chapters, which every patent has, if we take that in mind, and it's very important to have this in mind when searching with keyboards, um, to know if the, uh, the thought set will be very accurate, uh, but will have a very few documents, which is a uh, uh, high, high would be high precision, low recall, or if we want to have a data set which has many, many documents, 
but also many non-relevant ones. This depends where we're searching the keywords. Uh, it's, uh, if we're searching a title, we will, also, we will only get very relevant documents because they have to be in the title because we assume that the inventor, what he writes in the patent title is the key of his invention. So if the, the, the keywords correspond to the title of the invention, we assume that it's uh, uh, mostly very relevant. And then abstract claims a bit less. And then um, at the end we have description. If the keywords appear in description, might be relevant, but in many cases uh, can also be something which where well, the inventor describes something where the keyword appears, but at the end it has nothing to do with the invention itself. So it's always very important where to search the keywords. So you can play around a bit later on when you're doing the search, um, depending on the hype, uh, if you want to have low, uh, if you want to have a few uh, results, very relevant ones, or you want to have lots of relevant, lots of results, less relevant ones. As I said before, PL patents, that's a one, one of the big advantages, especially over, for example, scientific publications when we're doing search, patents are classified, okay? Every patent has a, the so-called EPC classification. This is a hierarchical classification managed by the World Intellectual Property Offices and it's uh, used in nearly every patent office over the world. Then you have another one, it's called CPC. I would like to sh share both of them with you because I think that uh, these, these are the most important ones. CPC is a joint project of the, of the US office and the, the EPO, the European Patent Office, and more and more patent offices in the world are using this classification scheme. Uh, you, have, you have also other classification schemes, for example, the Japanese one has uh, one of its own, but I would say for searching patents, these are the most uh, important ones which you could uh, take in mind. They are very um, powerful classifications. Um, their based IPC is, um, is, let's say the original one and CPC is based on IPC, but has a bit more levels of details. So um, you can see you have 2,050 categories versus 70,000 in IPC. So by searching an IPC and CPC, sorry, you have a lot more possibilities to detail out the technology, what you want to search by using classifications. But on the other hand, I have to say that all patents are classified with IPC, but not all with CPC. So you have to also take in, take in care um, the, the coverage of these classifications. They're all classified by experts, which makes them really valuable. So it's not the inventor who assigns them, who could be also as tricky as a patent lawyer to assign something which has nothing to do. It's always assigned by the examiner. So the examiner is uh, their subject matter experts. So we can get sure that the classification really describes what the, the patent is about. Mm -hmm. And it's mostly available in nearly all uh, patent databases. Here you can see some, some examples why you should use uh, patent classifications. Um, here, the first example, you have uh, different names of bottle openers, um, for example, you can say bottle opener, method of opening bottle, cork remover, cork lifter, lift or even lift arrangement. These are all uh, uh, descriptions so they're used for describing basically the, the same thing. So if you use uh, keywords, you would have very difficult to identify all these different uh, uh, bottle openers because they have, have all different title, different uh, naming. But if you would use the classification uh, corresponding to a bottle opener, which is this B67, B7, we would get all of them uh, without having to deal with keywords. Mm -hmm. It's one of the big advantages of the, the, the classifications. Um, we also have the, the, the other um, case round. So we, in the case that uh, the keyword describes uh, it's the same keyword, but it can describe something totally different. As it says here, lift arrangement, it has been used for a patent for a bottle opener, but also lift arrangement has been used for patterns regarding to cranes. Uh, so if we would use only the keywords, we would get also non relevant patents. If we would use uh, the classification, we, we would only get the lift arrangement we're interested in. In this case, the left one, the bottle opener. 
So as I said, it's, hier it's a hierarchical structure. Uh, it starts with one letter and then it uh, um, adds some numbers and then also again letters. Uh, it starts with something very general, broad general, and then it goes into more and more detail. Hmm? For example, here if there's um, some uh, classification regarding to um, to laser uh, laser cutting uh, technologies. And here you can see uh, the ones in green in the lower lower end of the hierarchies. These are the ones who were added by CPC classification. So you can see that the first um, uh, four um, five um, classifications uh, levels are as IPC. But then, if you want to dig in deeper, if you want to get more details, uh, usually you have to you have to um, use the, the CPC classification. Um, in most databases, you can you you can search for both in a, in a row. So it's as, as it's the same same same codes, especially in the upper levels. You can just uh, use, tell the database search the classification in both the CPC and IPC. Mm -hmm. So every pattern has at least one classification. Here, there's, there's an example on the right from a Turkish pattern, which um, specifically deals with this laser. Uh, cutting machine, and you can see that this classification we just saw on the earlier slide is here on the on the uh, the, the, the right um, marked spot on the right side, but also on the left side you see it and uh, in the databases. In this case, the SPSNet, it's also available. Usually, in the original document of the patent, you will you also you will only see the IP the IPC, the international classification. Whereas in the databases, you will do the searching, you will have both. So to, to sum up the as a search strategy, I would recommend you to use when you're doing then the searches. Um, here I put you four steps, which is also the usually procedure I'm, I'm doing myself and my, my, my patent information center. First of all, if I'm looking for something, I want to do a very, very narrow search, um, ident identify the keywords and do a narrow search only in the titles. So it's to find some very, very relevant patterns. And um, I will check these patterns if they're really relevant. Then I check how are they classified. So then I see him look, ah, okay, this is a nice relevant pattern. Then I will copy the classifications, IPC and CPC in these cases. And then I will do a broader search Mm. Then I will not only search in title, but will search in title and abstract or even in the claims in combination with these key, with these classifications. So then automatically I already filter out all these um, inventions which might use the same keywords, but has is another totally different technology, as, as I mentioned before in the example of the, the bottle opener. Mm. And then the last step, uh, adapt the search. Huh? The, so searching is usually an iterative um, procedure. Usually uh, no search, it will be perfect at the first uh, intent you do. Um, you always have this issue with the amount of patterns and the relevance of patterns. So you have to play around, depend on the, on the subject matter you're searching for. Uh, if, there are, if there are a lot of patterns around there, you have to play around with to get amount of patents which is manageable hmm? because it's it's not feasible to do a search where you get 5,000 patents at the end of the search and you have to check all these 5,000 patents if they're relevant, if they can destroy my novelty or not. Hmm? Usually the patent examiners in the offices, they try to narrow down the search to only 10, 15, let's say 20 documents and then they will analyze in depth these documents. Hmm? So it's a, Quite important for for not uh, having too much too much work by sipping through all these patent documents. Okay, now we have twenty minutes left. I would like to do uh, well. I say case study. It's not a real case study. It's more it's more a um, bit of a walkthrough of the. Um, um, patent database as Passnet. As Passnet is, uh, in my opinion, one of the most uh, um, powerful and um, freely available um, patent databases. There are some others that they will show you also at the, at the end of the session. Um, 
Uh, Spicenet is uh, managed by the European Patent Office and has a worldwide coverage of over 120 million documents. So it's quite a powerful source to research patents. As I said before, it's freely accessible. And since uh, 2019, it has a completely different uh, version of a different interface. So if someone of you already knows Passnet and has worked with it before and hasn't worked with it lately, so we'll see it's, it's totally different. Uh, so it's a totally different interface and also lots of new features uh, which were added by the European Patent Office. First of all, how can I access the database? It's uh, very easy. I either can go to the EPO homepage or what I would recommend you is directly um, copy paste the, the link and put here in the, on the website. I understand the presentation, you will have it later on uh, for your personal use. So you can say you can also use this link directly. And then you will go, you will get to the to the home screen of the of the um, database, which uh, looks like that. You have your search uh, form on the upper um, uh, in the upper side in the middle, uh, where it's putting into your search terms. In the middle, there's a little video. So if you want to get to know about um, as you can click on it. It's like a little introduction video. Might be interesting if you want to know more about, more about, uh, about the backgrounds of this database. But what you, for you, for searching is, is uh, first of all, it's important to have the search interface on the upper side. You can do searches either uh, with plain text search, uh, in Google style, just put some some keywords in it will working uh, if you're aware if you know uh, how to search databases from other search systems you're probably aware that uh, you can use uh, boolean commands um, and field identifiers just to know you just to you for you to know that you can use this search field for doing both okay so it's uh, uh, but i suppose if you're new to this you would like to first do a plain text search where the database tries to, um, what they call smart search, they try to figure out if the words you're using are corresponding to, um, to the content, to the title, for example, or if I put something for, uh, if I put 2016, the database would try to guess that I may mean this would be a year for publishing year, for example. So if we just example to keep on example of electric solar cars, <clears throat> it's a very, very broad uh, subject, of course. And there it's no wonder that we also get very, quite a lot of, of results, uh, almost, almost 20 of results. You get the results on the left side hmm, of, the, of the database. And then when you click on one of the documents on the right side, which now it's still um, empty, will appear the patent document and its bibliographic information. So you can see it here, for example, the first one. This is just an example to show you how the database uh, works and how you would um, then um, do, your, do your searches uh, later on. So you see on the right side, the bibliographic information. First of all, you have the patent number. Uh, the first two letters of the patent numbers, usually they are corresponding to the country where the patent comes from. But in this case, KR is a Korean. Uh, uh, patent. And then you have uh, applicants, inventors, classifications, of course. And if you then scroll further down, you would get them to the abstract. And as I said here, there's a little um, button which says bibliographic data. If you click on it, you will have the option not only to, uh, to get access to bibliographic data, but also to the full description of the patent, also to the images of the patent claims. Basically, the all what the concept the pattern you can you can uh, access it to this uh, via this uh, little menu. Basically, the, what the bibliographic pattern data shows us is uh, are the most important fields of the structured uh, unified data of patterns, which I mentioned before. Um, yeah, you have an uh, example here on the, the right side. You have uh, also the images here of the patterns which can be also quite useful when, when doing searches, um, especially if you have something which is easily recognizable um, by, their, by, their, by their image, by their form, 
um, sometimes uh, it's it's easier to do these uh, searches by skimming through the images rather than reading through all the text. So sometimes depends on the search subject, of course. Sometimes it's it's very straightforward if you if I'm looking for something in a patent database is is the image similar to what I have or is it not similar? Mm -hmm. If it's uh, so, it makes it quite far far easier and faster to to look through through documents. Um, by using the pattern images. So if your search is too, too broad, as it is the case here for electric solar car example, in a specnet you have something um, to, filter, to, to filter it, which is called uh, filters in the, in the upper side, um, where you don't need to reformulate in the query, you don't, you don't have to put, you don't have to write a new query, but you can filter down uh, your result set. You click on this button and then on the left side appear some uh, some different filters. You can, for example, here the first one you can also for some is uh, tell the database, I want to have only patents related to electric solar cars uh, from Turkey. And then I would click on countries, I would click on publication, I would, and I would, and I would uh, see where the country symbol for Turkey is. And then I would have an easy way I could filter it to patents uh, only related to, to a specific country. I can do the same for languages, uh, dates, of course, um, also classifications, if I want to further, further narrow down the, the, the technology field of the classification, et cetera. It does it on the fly, so it's very, very fast. You will see if you work when you're working with uh, Spassnet. And as I said before, you don't have to launch again your, your search. You can it directly in this interface. Uh, here, the example of the countries. You can uh, here in this example, I clicked on, on the US. There's a little search box here. I can also search for countries. Then I can either apply it to the search. I also I also can exclude it. So I could also say in my data set, I want um, I want to exclude Turkey, for example, as a country. So it depends on the button you will choose then. Then dates. Dates is. Uh, also quite important, uh, not specific for, for, uh, for novelty searches because novelty searches, everything that is uh, published is, uh, is already prior art. But if I, let's say I will do a freedom to operate search, um, I have to know, I have to search by, by dates because that's very important that uh, I want to look for patents which have been published or fi filed after a specific date where um, let's say my invention was, was filed. So I want to know if it's, if I have freedom to operate. So I have to take especially care of this uh, date fields, mm -hmm. but it's not the case for, for anonymity search. And yeah, all these statistics filters, um, they can also generate statistics. It's a bit hidden fit feature. That's why I, I show it to you, especially in the, in the database. Um, this is uh, interesting if you want to do some statistical analysis, if you want to use the information for some reports or some documents later on, or even some landscaping exercises. Uh, there's a little chart icon, you can click on it and then you will get uh, statistics. Uh, before it's all free, this database is free of cost. So you get some quite uh, nice statistics, um, which you can also export then later on for your, for your, um, for your documents. Here, for example, you have the top countries of the data set which uh, published uh, uh, patents in this specific uh, technology field. When they were published, uh, you see the dates and uh, their technology groups uh, in IPC and CPC, and you'll see it down there. As I said before, classification search is very important uh, to take in mind. Um, with Fastnet, there's a specific um, button for it. It's called classification search. It's right uh, down below the, the search uh, interface box. And then I will get to the, to the IPC and CPC classification. Um, if you're interested in the classification in general, you can just browse through. So in this case, it would, uh, I, cl it would cl I would click to A and then all level below would then uh, open up. Um, but in this case, uh, we usually, when we're doing pattern search, we have two ways of searching classifications. 
either is the way, first of all, the way that I explained to you before. It's uh, just to search of keywords in the title, very relevant documents and have a, have a look what classifications are in there in these patterns. So basically it's a, we copy the assigned classifications from very relevant patterns. This, uh, for example, here I looked for patterns that have electric toothbrush in their title, because I want to know the classification for electric toothbrush. So I use I, this, I only search in title, I will get very relevant results. And then I copy the classification. This in this case on the right side, you see this A61 C17. This is a classification for electric toothbrush, which I can use them for improving my search. Another way to search for classifications is using the classification search uh, search box, which hasn't uh, don't confuse it with the search of the whole database. This will only search in the classification schemes. So if I'm in this case, I can put electric toothbrush, and then the database the Will, share, will, will tell me which uh, specific things are the most appropriate classifications for this, um, these uh, keywords. Um, in this case, it getting, it's getting, it gets it right. It marks the uh, relevance of two stars. The first one the, in, the, in the short list is the one we, we saw before, the A61C70. You can see the classification is called devices for cleaning, polishing, rinsing, drying teeth, and so on. So this is a classification where most of the electronic toothbrush patterns are in. So if we search for the classification, we would get uh, relevant patterns. Then there's also something for the more advanced users who don't, do not want to use only uh, the open free text for the keywords. There's a um, uh, so-called query builder and SPASNet. This is something new. This is something and also a bit, um, let's say, complicated or for, for people using a databases, it's not that common to see because usually you have, you have these uh, formula form fields where you have to um, base, uh, use the, the um, the keywords in already fixed uh, uh, fields, but here you can um, build your query and tell that uh, that as percent which fields you want to search and which not. So basically, you can with the X button you can delete the the, the field from the query, and um, you can add all the fields which uh, offers uh, as percent for for your query. If you play around a bit, you can see then all these options are available and you see this and and or this would be um, the, the the boolean queries basically and um, if i combine something with and means that both in both um, uh, fields that i'm searching the the, the, the keywords have, have to be available if i, if I use the or query for example search for something here and then or search for something there it can be either way so that the there will be less relevant with the or query but i will get much more documents you can add fields you can delete fields and you can also even uh what's, it's called um nest the query so if you if you would deal with several and or queries you can do a Kind of a hierarchy in this in this in this query. Um, this can be a bit, uh, a bit more complicated, and it's usually only the case uh, when you're using like a very complex queries, which involves lots of keywords, different concepts, and different classification of different concepts. Then, then you then you would use this kind of um, query builder. Usually, you're quite fine without nested queries. Then something useful I would like to share with you. It's uh, usually in a search, as I said before, it's iterative steps. You're doing several searches to improve your search. But you might find in all these searches already some, some really important documents. So maybe you will think, how, how could I save this document? You could, uh, of course, you can always copy paste the pattern number, but this pattern has something which is called my, my patterns, where you can um, mark the patterns, and then it will be saved locally on your computer. 
Okay, so it's quite a useful feature because you can collect your relevant patterns while you are doing several searches. Uh, so you have to have, you don't have to have one perfect search. You can do several searches and all these searches, you can click on the patterns you really think you're interested and then it will be saved in this my pass and my patent um, um, listing. You can see how we do it. It's like every patent, when you go into the bibliographic view, you have this uh, little star on the left side on the, on the number, just click the star and then it automatically it gets saved in this uh, my patent list. Huh? Or if you want to select more than one patent, you could just uh, click on the checkbox here and then you have this menu and can say add selection to my patents. Hmm. These are the two possibilities you can do it. I know it's a bit loud for, for a comprehensive is um, uh, course. Uh, of course, the database has much more features, but uh, we, we won't have the time to tell you all of it. Just to, uh, to tell you about limitations of Spasnet, especially if you have complex searches, you have to be aware that Spasnet uh, has a maximum of 10 terms allowed by, by search field and 20 uh, allowed in, in, in the overall search query. And uh, some truncations, for example, left truncation is not supported. Um, some other databases I will show you now, it's they, they have don't have these uh, uh, limitations, but when they're on the other side, they have also some other things, which well, maybe one, one thing I would recommend you, the database I'll show you now, you, you just compare it and then you, at the end, you can, you can still decide which one you like, you like most. Yeah? But naturally I cannot explain in detail all these databases. So the next database I'll explain is just, um, just a slide. So I'll just recommend you just to um, also have a look at them. Especially the first ones here. So it's uh, it's a very uh, also very interesting database. It's called Lens. It's uh, made by uh, it's financed by uh, financed by the foundation of, of Bill Gates. It's it's, it's it's a very useful, especially they have some specific features uh, good for biotech searches. If your project is related to biotechnology, uh, be aware that this database has a genetic uh, genetic uh, patent sequencing search interface. So it's, it can be really useful if you have a um, biotech patent search. And then another, another, another good thing that it also has on a separate way though, but you have um, not only a patent search available here, but also scientific uh, paper search, which is also an important step if you do doing to search. As I said before, novelty cannot only be destroyed by other patents, but also by publications or even websites. Yeah? So it's, you have to be, to, be, to be aware, not looking for patents, of course, but also, also take in mind um, other sources which, uh, where the information can have been uh, disclosed. Mm -hmm. Then is uh, Patent Scope. Patent Scope is also a database from a big patent office. In this case, it's the WIPO, the World Intellectual Property Organization. It's, um, I would say it's similar to SPASNET. Um, <clears throat> it has um, some, in my opinion, I like more the query builder of SPASNET because it gives me more flexibility. <clears throat> but this one has from some, some tools, um, which for example, help you of the translation of the keywords. And it's also quite good if you want to export um, lots of uh, data because uh, you have a less limitation than, for example, in the case of Xplasnet. Google, Google, as a, as it might uh, surprise, is also um, into this uh, has uh, entered into this uh, patent database business. Um, it's uh, I'll leave you the link. Um, it's uh, improved quite a lot this database, so I definitely uh, would recommend you also to have a look at especially because it's uh, really easy to use as it's a Google product. It uh, makes the user tries to ha help as much as possible. In my opinion, it's sometimes a bit too much. So it's, it's typically Google that automates a lot, tries to think what you think. So it's uh, sometimes, yeah, it's, uh, but have a look at it. It's, uh, it's also a very, very nice and interesting alternative for you doing your searches. And uh, yeah, the, the scientific literature search is also integrated. It's here, it's here really integrated, not like a lens where you have two separate databases. 
here we have a because of the Google Scholar is in, in this uh, platform also integrated. So you have um, uh, one search, uh, not only searching patterns, but also kind of search, uh, search publications. So it's might be quite an interesting source for novelty searches. Chilcam, that's the last one I would like to share with you. Um, this is specifically recommended if your project is about uh, chemistry uh, about uh, from a certain composition, for example, um, because it has a specific dedicated uh, chemical uh, compound search uh, interface. So here you can either copy paste or really you can construct or editor the, the chemical formula, and you can also import the chemical formula with the um, so-called mole files. So there's this. Um, um, if you have these uh, files available for your component, um, you can directly uh, do the search because as you know, um, in chemistry, there's also um, a compound. Uh, you have several names for compound. Um, you have also even trademarks uh, associated with that with the compound. So this, uh, this um, if by using chemical um, compounds directly, so you, you also um avoid to um, or you you your patent data set will be complete for the patent chemical compounds so yeah here um yeah perfectly in time more or less here's some further information i would like to share with you um of course there's there's some, there's some other databases around um, the, the commercial ones, there are also, there are also some databases who have a freemium model, so you can, there's a little part is free, but all the interesting features basically you have to pay for it. Right? Um, I think the databases I showed you here, especially if Spassnet, uh, they're really worth uh, have a look, and especially for, for, for your project, I think they will, they will do the, the, the job for a novelty search. Um, if you want to look a bit more about um, IP in general, I have a look at our IP help desk guides. Uh, I didn't say it before, I think I forgot it, but I'm also um, uh, working in the IP help desk from the European Union as an ambassador for, for Spain in this case. And on our website, we have a dedicated uh, section of um, uh, guides, guidelines regarding patenting, regarding patent commercialization also. I would also like to recommend you the EPO patent information tour. It's also quite quite nice. The second link, and there's also a WIPO information guide, um, which I'd like to also share, share with you. Yeah, I think um, uh, I understand. It was maybe a bit. There was a lot of content uh, packed in one hour. I know, but I'm um, sorry, it's uh, couldn't. Uh, do it a lot longer because uh, as I said before, I have to I have to leave pretty soon. But I think um, yeah, maybe with some, some minutes left, if you have some urgent questions. Um, apart of that, you have here my, my email. Of course, you can put me questions in my email and also uh, yeah, uh, Sarah can can can forward me the questions you you bring to him uh, as I understand. So thank, yeah. you, thank you very much. It was uh, timely. It was a really nice presentation. Is, I wonder if there is any questions uh, to you from participants. They can can you see anything for chat box or? Oh no, I, I think I've well I will stop my sharing. Then I might can I can yeah. stop sharing. Thank you. And then we'll check chat box. Okay. No, ah uh, yes, okay. No questions from chip. Okay. Um, Bjorn, thank you very much. Uh, I guess there is no questions to you, but if there is any question, I'm sure we, we will email you or the participant email you. Thank you very much for being with us today. It was very useful. And uh, we are building ourselves for the future commercialization with a group of uh, with, with 10 groups. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, and, and feel free if you have any doubts. I understand you do you do some group works, right, regarding novelty search, also, right? Yes. And, uh, if you have any questions, you can you can lead them to me. No problem. Uh, just one thing: can we uh, disseminate your presentation if you send us PDF version to participant? Is that okay? Yes, sure, sure. I'll send you the presentation right now. Great.
Thank you very much. Thank you Bjorn. Evet. Ekin evet. söz sende. Ee, hocam eklemek istediğimiz bir şey yok zannedersem e, mentorlarımızla evet, ödeklerle bir... Ödeklerle ilgili gelecek haftayı belki şey, arkadaşlarla konuşabiliriz. Hı -hı. O var. Onun dışında ee, bir şey yok. Ben hocamızdan gelecek olan sunumla beraber bu haftanın ödevlerini kullanıcılara paylaşıyor olacağım. Geldi akşam. Yine bu akşam kendileriyle bilgi tamam. paylaşmış olur. Çok teşekkürler. Bjorn, thanks again. Okay, I will leave you then. Okay, yes, bye bye. Yeah. Bye bye. Yon, thank you so much. Bye bye, Mustafa. Bye bye. Yani programla ilgili soru var. Arkadaşlar herhangi bir soru ya da aklınıza takılan bir şey? Yok. Peki o zaman e, Perşembe ya da e, şeylerde mentorluk oturumlarında görüşmek üzere. Hepinize iyi akşamlar. İyi akşamlar. İyi görüşürüz. İyi akşamlar. Etil Hanım görüşürüz. İyi akşamlar. Hoşçakalın.